I was the type of kid whose regular exposure to nature was the three-minute commute from the parking lot to school. <laughs> and I preferred binge-watching a TV series on Netflix to going outside and shooting some hoops. So it's safe to say that my relationship with Mother Nature was a bit strained. As a product of the information age, I grew up surrounded by computers and tablets. So spending time outside went quite literally out the window. When I was younger, you could just give me a book, a TV remote, or a handheld console, and I would be set for hours. But as the years passed by, and my increasingly indoor lifestyle persisted, my parents became concerned. They kept on trying new ways to get me to go outside, but I ignored them, thinking they were nuts. <laughs> but now, I understand why they signed me up for those outdoor camps I reluctantly went to, and why they got a playset in our backyard that I used maybe twice. <laughs> Unfortunately, not all of my peers have come to the same realization, and their collective shunning of Mother Nature has not gone without consequence. Our current generation consists of average eight-year-olds who recognize 25% more Pokemon characters than actual animals, <laughs> and elementary school students who think cows hibernate in the winter. So it's no wonder the only birds teenagers can recognize today are either angry or flappy. <laughs> With a technology-oriented world, kids just don't have time to stop and smell the roses. This notion was confirmed in 2013 by the National Wildlife Federation, who stated that kids spend more than seven hours a day inside while only spending 30 minutes or less outside. This nature deficit can cause some far-reaching problems for children in the future. Now, now. I know what you may be thinking. Is this some outdoorsy hippie standing up there ranting to us about children and their abuse of technology? I can assure you, I'm no such thing. But this is a serious problem. Journalist Richard Liu shares his concern about kids spending too much time indoors in his 2005 book, Last Child in the Woods. He addresses this problem through a term he coined nature deficit disorder. He explains to us how this is not a medical condition, but contends that our neglect of nature can cause some serious problems for children in the future. One of nature deficit disorder's scariest impact on children is on their health. Doctors have shown that increased time indoors can lead to poor vision, emotional problems, and even an increase of symptoms of ADD and ADHD. But the largest impact, however, is from obesity. According to the American Heart Association in 2013, 17% of children ages 2 to 19 are obese. That's a whopping total of over 13 million children. It is well known that these higher rates of obesity lead to higher rates of heart disease. And with heart disease taking effect at a younger age, studies such as those from the May 2010 Current Problems in Adolescent Healthcare warn us that our generation might actually be at risk of having a shorter lifespan than our parents. Let that sink in for a moment. If we continue on our current trajectory, our children will live shorter lifespan than our parents. The consequences of our neglect of nature are not only limited to the children, the ramifications can also be felt on the environment. According to the August 1, 2008 publication of the London Independent, Sir David Attenborough warns us, the wild world is becoming so remote to children that an interest in nature doesn't grow as it should. I think one suburban fifth grader put it best when he said, I like to play indoors, because that's where all the electrical outlets are. <laughs> With global problems such as habitat destruction and global warming looming over our heads, we need children to understand nature in order to preserve and protect it. But as Attenborough states, no one will protect what they don't care about, and no one will care about what they have never experienced. Our society has an issue at hand. We are detached from nature. So the solution seems simple. We need to reattach. 
put the, TV, put the cell phone down, turn off the TV, and unplug the computer. Cut that electrical umbilical cord, and now we are making progress. Kids and teens, when you hear on TV that you need to spend at least an hour a day outside, they're not lying. During your free time, put your electronic device down and go for a bike throughout Lincoln. But it's not just the kids. Parents, you have to stop stressing out so much about stranger danger. Richard Louvre encourages parents to teach their kids how to stay safe and then to set them free. When we place restrictions on where children can go, that's when we deprive them of vital exposure to nature. You can also encourage your family to take walks after dinner, start a vegetable garden, or plan monthly outdoor activities. Just walk out your front door and enjoy all that nature has to present to you. But in order to really change our relationship with Mother Nature, we must strive towards community-based solutions. In our very own community, we need to employ more green design principles, continue to, continue to build nature trails and walkways, and get rid of some of the regulations that discourage natural play. Just take Davis, California, for example. A city of roughly 70,000 people, Davis employs contractors who are pioneering suburban village homes. These village homes are pointed inwards towards open green spaces. Vegetable gardens are encouraged and orchards, not gates nor walls, surround the community. Parents have set up neighborhood groups where one parent sits on their porch and watches over as the community's kids run loose in the natural environment. Trust me, I'm no advocate for the Amish lifestyle. All that I'm saying is that in order to really bring our kids back to Mother Nature, we must unite as a community. When we unite as a community, there's nothing we can't do. But the change won't be an easy one. It'll take time and require dedication. But it's nothing we can't do, and the results are worth it. Just recently, I made a change in my life, a change that would motivate me to put the TV remote down and go for a bike throughout Lincoln's beautiful trails, a change that would inspire me to start a vegetable garden for our family. We're now using fresh vegetables in our cooking. And finally, a change that would inspire me to stand here today and talk to you all. So now, take a hike. I mean, really, take a hike.